Good morning, how are we? Um, it is Monday morning, so as I thought, I did not vlog over the weekend. Um, it was a bit of a weird one, to be completely honest. I have lots of ups and downs. Um, so Saturday, me and Phil were here. We helped Dad cut a load of the woodwork for the hut that's going out the back um, to help him train for his um, cycling holiday next year. It's his 60th, um, and for it, he's decided to go and do um, the Alps, so that's fine we're quite happy with him doing that and um, but he needs to do a lot of training and um, so we're building a hut in the garden so that was saturday uh in the evening uh me and phil stayed here um and watched sleepy hollow um which is one of mum's favorite films i think it must be um and then sunday we got a load of my boxes down from the loft like all my kitchen stuff and moved it into phil's house um watched the Linkin Park Memorial concert and if any of you were there or any of you have seen it it's just it, it really touched us some of it um with all the guest uh support singers I suppose just taking Chester's part um and actually it really sort of spoke to me um you know and this whole make press make Chester proud and, and fuck depression and yeah completely you know, depression can hit us. When we think we're on top of the world, it can just bring us crashing back down and it just keeps the fog of doubt just there and there are days where it is very, very dark. Um, I mean, admittedly, there are days which are absolutely fantastic and, you know, the depression doesn't hit you, but I think for a lot of people that suffer severely with it, um, it's always in the back of your head, um, waiting as this little voice about to attack um, and it's normally when you really least need it. Um, so I kind of took that in and, uh, thought, you know what, this week has to be different. You know, I can't sit on my backside, do nothing, lay in bed, um, watch TV and, and do nothing when there are lots of things I could be doing. Um, so what am I doing? Laying in bed, you may say, <laughs> um, at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning. Well, I have three days and then I have a talk to give in Romsey. So today is planning my talk, um, which is all about the Romsey connection in World War One. So that's pretty um, simple for me. It's the project that I've been living for the last two years. Um, I'm gonna set the scene a little bit on 1914, what um, was happening here in Romsey, what was happening in the greater world, as to how we got to the Great War, uh, and then take them through the four years of Great War and that impact that it then had on Romsey, thus giving us the Romsey connection. So we'll look at the different um, countries that had troops stationed here, um, the the support that Romsey were given by those troops, and also the support that Romsey gave those troops. Oh wait, hang on, did I say that right? Oh, not sure. Um. Like in the the cat's been in the bed, so the stones in it. Um, so yeah, it's it, it'll be about that, and I'm telling some of the really big stories of some of our men, such as Albert Stagg, Cecil Perkis, um, to name just a few, uh, and then explain to them like how we've got to the role of honor, where we've got that information from, and the next steps of how we continue to develop this Romsey connection. So that probably will mean another heritage lottery grant, or. There is an awe here. So at the weekend, I sat down with Phil and my mum and was just sort of, I'm, I don't know where I'm going with this. You know, I don't know where I'm going with my history. I feel like people aren't taking me seriously because all I've got is a degree behind me. And actually, let's be honest, a lot of people have a degree behind them now. Um, I've run a research project for two years, um, but it doesn't really appear to be enough for a lot of people because a lot of other people have a master's research degree. So... I have written an email to Canterbury University, no, the University of Kent in Canterbury, I always get confused with that, um, to a professor there that has helped me along the way over the last few years uh, on my Romsey project and said to her, what are your thoughts? You know, is it something that I could do? Um, I think it is something I could do part-time over the next two years and get myself a master's degree, um, but I would want to do it on my project because it's what I truly love and I want to be known for doing um 
there are scholarships and bursaries available so that may help but if it's part-time then I can get myself a little part-time job um, or carry on doing like the wench to trench stuff so I'm feeling a little bit more positive although I'm waiting for that email I'm constantly watching my phone waiting for an email to ping in which you know might happen today might not um, but I can't think like that I've done all I can with that I need to write this talk because that's happening on Wednesday um, which is really nerve-wracking and then the following day on Thursday I have to then go to London for a little conference which is all about funding in World War One projects um, and we're going to talk about some of the more, more successful ones, case studies for the successful ones of which we're one um, and like reapplying for funding and where to go next so that again might be really helpful for me um, so I've got to take this week a lot more positive there's no doubt that if I go to these talks and these conferences in the mental frame that I was in last week, they won't be any use to me. Um, I will just take negativity away. I will just exude negativity. Um, so anybody there looking for assistance on a project or, I don't know, a research fellow just isn't going to be interested in someone that's just full of negativity. Instead, I have to go, I have to talk about me in a really positive way, talk about the project in a really positive way and what I want to do. Um, so it's it's difficult to do that mental shift um, when there are still some things which are really foggy in my mind. Um, plus me and Phil have been having a few little arguments which aren't helpful when they carry on till like gone midnight. Um, and I've said to him that has to stop because I have to I have to be at my best game this week. There are lots of positive things that could come off the back of this. Um, but I have to go in thinking that they're going to happen and not, oh, this is a waste of my time. So, a different week this week. Um, at some point I may sit down and just film a bit of a download on my depressive sort of episode that I seem to be having at the minute. It's a real um, roller coaster and it's a real struggle sometimes. And I think that's more to do with like being at home, working by myself and not having that structure around me, um, having to make that structure myself. And the deadlines being there aren't like solid so I can move them really easily. Uh, I know I shouldn't because in the longer run it doesn't create me in a really good light. So, yeah. It's about getting your head in the right headspace. Um, and I don't know, maybe if I've got something a little bit more clearer, such as my research degree, um, maybe that's that would be a really good thing for me. Um, I feel like I'm waffling a little bit. I also am about to sneeze, so I think I might stop this here. Um, but this is my Monday morning update. I hope you've had a good weekend. Um, mine was meh, <laughs> as much as last week was, but... You know, I've got fingers crossed for positivity this week. Um, and who knows what might come out of it. I am, um, you know, I'm always hopeful. And I guess we just, just wait and see again now. Um, which I hate the waiting game. But then I've got other things to keep me occupied and um, keep me going. So as I say, I hope you're all well, I hope you've had a good weekend, and I will see you tomorrow morning with another little update on my life. And with that, the camera just stops focusing, um, which is brilliant. Um, I think it's because I'm moving quite a lot today. Um, so I, as I say, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I hope you have a good day.